welcome to another of what we hope will be a fantastic uh, episode of the Queer Black Artistry and Experience Series on the Couch, part of our I Will Survive pandemic virtual presentation of the show. Hey everyone, I uh, hope your day is beautiful and gorgeous and awesome, just like all of you. I'm your host here, Antoine, and this is my little co-host and daddy's best little friend, Cowboy. Today, I am really excited. <laughs> we, our guest is from one of the most loved shows in the past few years by the LGBTQ community plus uh, and the world at large. Uh, I'm talking Shit's Creek. And I'm talking about personally one of my most favorite characters on the show, Ronnie Lee, <laughs> incredibly by Karen Robinson. Karen is a lot more. <laughs> She's clapping in the background. <laughs> uh, but Rob, but Karen is about about a lot more than just Shit Creek. She is a multi award winning uh, and nominated performer, and will be seen next on reoccurring on in the upcoming Netflix series Tiny Pretty Things, and she will soon begin production on CBC's Buddy Cop comedy Lady Dicks. Other recent career highlights include Frankie Drake for CBC, Paul Mart's morning show Mysteries, and her 2019 Canadian Screen Award winning performance in Mary Kills People. I hope you're as excited as I am. Let's bring her on. Hello, Karen. Hello. I'm clapping <laughs> myself. <Is that> a... <laughs> you are, you know you what? You are so, so good, right? You, you are so different than you, Karen. <laughs> I wake up in the morning, I don't think multi-award winning and nominated, blah, 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 blah. I think, oh, God, <laughs> help me. <laughs> hey, your, your publicist had to send me off. <laughs> so I had to say it. Okay, okay. Well, my publicist probably has to send me all that stuff. So I <laughs> They know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm always surprised because your character, and we'll talk about your character soon, but your character on the show is so different than your real life character. Ronnie is a lot. Acting. Kind of, kind of, it's not uh, acting. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's, let's get going with, um, I just, uh, by the way, I just finished season uh, five and I, I think I, I can find it in you. I'm anxiously waiting season six on Netflix. But I hear us in, us on CBC. So you want to know what happens? You want to know what happens? No. <laughs> no. I can tell you no. what happens. <laughs> no spoilers, please. No. Uh, no, I was going to say no spoilers. Okay. Uh, before we get on to your work, let's get to know you personally. Tell yeah. me a little bit about your uh, personal story. Where from? Family? Growing up? That sort of thing, please. Okay. Um, I was born in London, England, and, um, I was raised in Kingston, Jamaica, and I came to Canada, uh, when I was 16 years old, so, you know, like, five, ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we can, we can. <laughs> At the most, 15. I was 15 years ago. And, um, I, uh, yeah. That, that that's sort of my background. I've been in this country ever since. I've been living in Canada longer than I've been li than I've lived anywhere else. So you know, so this your, is my your home. career started in Canada, right? My career did start in Canada, even though I mean, yeah, in a w well, no, not, in a very real way, I think I was um, I was influenced by my Jamaican upbringing because. Um, because there's one particular woman, her name was um, Louise Bennett, who had this Saturday afternoon show called Ring Ding, and it was a variety show for kids. And uh, kids could go on and do poetry or sing or dance or do whatever. And this woman also was, um, uh, was one, uh, well, is our most well-known, um, oh, good Lord, I can't speak today, uh, purveyor of um of jamaican poetry she okay. wrote she performed and she it's it's like she took that jamaican culture and fashioned it into a crown 
and put it on our heads as children and said, here you go, now you, the work is done. You wear it, you wear it well, make me proud. And um, I, I feel like I actually got that dramatic, um, that, that idea that I could do this. I, I could do this as um, a life endeavor from her. I think I got my dream there from my mother, quite frankly. Bless her soul. Um, but I, uh, I, I feel as though the, the atmosphere that Louise Bennett created with, uh, with her poetry and drama and her TV shows and that sort of thing really gave me the sense that um, I was, I could embody the person of an actor. The entire, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, well, uh, speaking of that, uh, this, in, this, in this series, we're highlighting the Black artist experience. What, uh -huh. has yours been, what has yours been like? Has it been challenging being a person of color to get into the industry? We talked we talk before about uh, representation in media and the difficulty of that. So, yeah, what can you share with me? Um, I feel as though, um, because I was the youngest of four children and my parents were really tired by this time, they got around to <laughs> me. <laughs> Um, even though they definitely did not want me to um, do this for a living, they didn't want me to go into um, the entertainment industry, it's something that I did anyway. And it wasn't me disobeying them. Um, like, it wasn't like barefaced disobedience. It was, it was me thinking to myself, or maybe not thinking to myself, I don't see how else <laughs> I can get into this life, and just doing it anyway. And I find that I've carried that throughout much of my career. I feel as though when people told me, and I was definitely told in many ways, that this industry was not for me. You're not pretty enough. You're not white enough. You're not skinny enough. You're not wow. Indian enough. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not. You, actually, you're get that, you actually get those, uh, those, those replies? Wow. Well, um... Yeah, not so much anymore because I'm better now, known now, and um, and I uh, a, and I've also you know proven them wrong. But yeah. when I was starting out, definitely. Now there were also people who encouraged me, and God bless those people. Right place, right time. Definitely okay. figured into um, the beginning of my career. But there were naysayers, and um, and even throughout, what I found is. As a successful actor in this business, as a black woman, and as a black woman who looks a certain way, there are some parts that you are not considered for. And I've had to, I've had to fight against that. And sometimes I've won and sometimes I've lost. But um, I, I think that, you know, the more of us you speak, you speak to, the more you'll find that we, that our heads are butting against that ceiling quite often and uh that i'll tell you has not gone away with you know 25 years of being in this industry despite okay. the good okay. fortune what? and the success and the blessings that i've experienced what what about representation what about the roles that are offered we also mentioned uh, this before uh usually for uh arabs i know for for poc uh, even for for um LGBT, the roles are, or in the past at least, they used to be, you're either the terrorist, the criminal, the butt of the joke, the best friend, nothing yeah. mean. This has been changing, and I'm very, very happy to see a lot more. Yeah, there's like movies like uh, Moonlighting, and more, uh, like there's some yeah. really significant stories. Yeah. Um, but has it been a challenging to find the right roles that you like to do? I have played a lot of best friends. A lot of best friends. Okay. I've played a lot of judges and lawyers and doctors and people who deliver information. Okay. Um, I have found that it is changing very gradually and not a minute too soon. It's okay. late, um, as far as I'm concerned, way late. But the the challenge is, as you alluded to, to find roles that are 
well-rounded and um yeah. and give you the opportunity to play everything that you are so i have this face and i have this tone of voice and i have this presentation that makes me seem you know very um very believable as an authority figure okay. but i have made terrible mistakes i have been a pretty shitty person at times i have um you know i have loved the wrong person and I, and I, you know, and I have collapsed into tears. All of those things. It's, it's, it's like allowing, allowing us to play the entire spectrum of, of who we are as human beings is, I would say, yeah, that is a challenge. That is a challenge that, um, that we face. Thank you. We want, we want a Ronnie Lee movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Character movie. <laughs> I'd agree with you. I agree with you. I, I would love to see a Ronnie Lee movie. Oh, there's probably a lot more layers to her than we saw on the show. I, I mean, agree. She's a human being. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I agree. As opposed to always being the, you know, the, the face. <laughs> I, lo the I love her though. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not and I, I absolutely adore Ronnie. And, you know, and she certainly filled her spot in the, um, in the community of Shit's Creek. But you know, I'm a poor movie. Um, <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna jump back to, to Ronnie at some point, but I, I really like what you said. At the beginning, the first few episodes, I thought they're just gonna keep her as a secondary, but the more you watch the seasons, the more I really felt that she is integral to the story. I yeah. actually missed, an, if there was an episode that Ronnie wasn't on, it's like, where is she? Is she, is she oh, at home disappearing? <laughs> Bless her heart. <laughs> uh, she's, you know, she's my type of pe she's my type of people. She's sharp, she's witty, she doesn't yeah. take bullshit from anybody. I no. I really love the character. And she doesn't have to say a lot of words to get her point across. <laughs> she doesn't have to say any words to get her point across. <laughs> just a look, just a little look. Just, just a look. look. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Karen, there's a lot happening in the world these days. We got. Mm -hmm. COVID, racism, demonstrations, a lot of action. It feels like change is up in the air. Yeah. Uh, what is on your mind? What is, what is, what is something you're going up to, you're very you know, thinking about now, these days? How willing we all have to be to have uncomfortable conversations in order to get past this point and get to the next get to where we need to be and okay. be better when we're there when we get there okay. um I, I feel like uh i i feel like people don't want to make mistakes people don't want to be called out people don't um like to say i'm sorry yeah. um you know uh, because because we don't want we don't want to feel like we're fools right we avoid that much of the time yeah. and um and the thing is if we're gonna learn anything we have to screw up we absolutely have to screw up and we have to we have to own those screw ups um and i i find those conversations difficult to difficult to embark upon, even though I do it, and most of the time when I do it, it actually has beneficial results. But, um, but everybody sort of mincing around each other or shouting at each other, um, well, I actually think that the anger is very, very well placed, and I, I completely understand it. But in our interpersonal relationships, yeah. we have to be able to talk through this. And, um, and I... And I, I feel as though if we each endeavor to do that, then we will, we will get to where we're going. But if we don't, then we invite the status quo after, you know, af after this all dies down, and hopefully yeah. it doesn't, but I think people are hoping that it does, some people are hoping that it does, then the okay. status quo will just come back and form itself into what we thought was comfortable. And the thing is, it's not comfortable for everyone. Okay. I tell you what, I was, I was on another show with a leader in, in uh, BLM movements and whatever, and that's what we were talking about. I hope it doesn't die down. I hope we continue acknowledging the mistakes that happened along the way. Yeah. Uh, but, we, 
we're, we should be able to have conversations because if you're not willing to uh, understand and, and, and see the mistakes that you've done and all what you do is feel that your back is up against the wall, we're yes. not going to get anywhere. We need we're to not going to get anywhere. Yeah. We, we really are. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get into, uh, you voiced your concern about being on the show as someone who is not queer when I asked you to be a guest on the show, but you are very queer positive. Because mm -hmm. in the last few days, I discovered that you have queer friends. I actually had an interview with your uh, friend, Notisha Masakwe. Yes. And, uh, and what, 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 a, what, a, what a small world. Because I'm telling her that I actually, she saw my post on Facebook that I'm interviewing you. And she's like, but I know Karen. And Karen did, got the Inspire Awards last year. And she's, yeah. I'm getting the Inspire Awards this year. It's like, okay, is what a she? small world. Oh, yes, that's I didn't know that she is. Oh, you didn't know that? She's, yeah. she's the recipient of Lifetime Achievement Award, the biggest honor that we have. <laughs> I that's amazing. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. I have to tell her congratulations. But just, Antoine, let's be clear. It wasn't, I didn't receive the award last year. It was shit so. I was just there accepting it on their behalf. <laughs> and, and we loved having you there. <laughs> yeah. well, hopefully, me. maybe next May, because we, we canceled this year, but next May, maybe you'll join Natisha and come to the awards as a guest of us. <laughs> Hopefully. Invite okay. me. Right. Um, how challenging was, uh, 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 actually, you know what? Um, let's, let's, let's frame the question. What are your thoughts? Uh, usually it's, it's uh, while you're not queer, uh, people coming out in cultures such as Arabs or PLC or Black is a little bit more challenging. What are your thoughts on coming out in our cultures? I think everyone um, have, I think we have to give room for every single person to have their own journey. Um, I, I think that, um, I think there are, there are as many coming out stories are, as there are people who actually, um, who actually do come out. And I, and I feel as though in, well, as you as you said, you know, in your culture, in my culture, it can be that much more challenging. Um, and I feel as though we need that much more compassion in wow. order to take that journey. Yeah. Um, I understand. That I I understand as as you know, someone who identifies as straight. Um, I I can only empathize with how incredibly different i mean i'm sorry in, incredibly difficult it can be because because in because in certain circumstances it's a matter of life or death Thank right you. Yeah. and um it, it's it, 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 to ask someone to you know to run towards that uh, that um that choice full force is it, it's it's a huge ask and um, and so I, what I've been learning in my later years is just give everyone as much time as they need in order to, you know, take journey. their steps along. Yeah, along yeah. that route, take their steps. But I understand. I understand the difficulty. Thank you. And there's no. I really like what you said. There's no journey like other. We everybody has to take their time and has to. Yeah. yeah. Um. Right. Let's uh, let's do a bit of work here. Let's talk about your upcoming projects before we get into the big chat about Shit's Creek because I know my friends will really turn me apart if I don't talk more Shit's Creek. But okay. Lady Dix, brilliant name. I'm assuming it's not referring. It's referring to Private Eye, not the other reference. So what can? Oh, <laughs> yes, you know? it's referring to Private Eyes. Yeah. What What is the show about, and what do you play? Well, like you said, it's a buddy cop, and I, I, I play the unit commander. So <laughs> there I am again, telling people what to do. <laughs> I play commander, um, and I, I'm, at this point, I'm married, I have kids, I have pets, I'm very domesticated, and, uh -huh. um, and I feel as though, uh, you know, the, uh, the two women that I'm going to be working mostly with are just you know, I think it's, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be fantastically funny. Okay. And, I, you know what? I can't wait. <laughs> I, 
and I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait. It's just one of those shows that even the title gets you to want to see it. Uh, what yeah. else? What else are you excited about that's uh, coming up soon as well? Well, I just found out today that I'm going to be on an episode of Nurses. So, oh, wow. Because that's coming up this week. <laughs> um, and what, what else? What else? What else is... Uh, um, I, there are going to be more installments of, um, of Morning Show Mysteries okay. for Hall that I will be doing later in the year. Okay. And um, I'm, I'm excited about going back to work and figuring out how we're going to do this thing that was always such a social endeavor, how we're going to do this thing that we do with all of the COVID measures in place. It's, it, I, I feel like it's a challenge that we definitely can overcome. But it's like, it's, it's like the bigger picture. Um, it's like the bigger picture that we're experiencing with this revolution. It's, um, we can't go back to the way things were because of everything that we now know it wasn't so, working uh, obviously <laughs> and it wasn't working um it wasn't working well um and in that in in that sense um maybe it do, it's not a great analogy for filming tv but given what we now know how are we going to make this work i like it I'm really interested in that. I'm so that it's working for everyone, so that it's fair, so that it's fair, so that it's just. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Okay. You know what? You're at, the second guest who's uh, in in your field who mentioned that that's a lot on actors' mind. How what's going to be the next steps in 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 your industry? How are you going to deal? You know. Uh, yeah. All right, Ronnie again. Uh, uh, we love her, uh, and uh, actually, I don't know if you, do you have you seen the, the meme going on social media that Ronnie's saying, thanks for the heads up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that kills me because my friends keep using, every time I say anything on Facebook, they slap the Ronnie, the Ronnie. <laughs> uh, so, you are we talked welcome. about how... <laughs> thank, thank you for that gift yes <laughs> uh, while we established that she was fun to play obviously how did you get the role i walked into an audition room i you know what and it still floors me that you know one i we do a lot of auditions as actors but that one audition could have led to these six years of such joy, not only joy for me playing the role, but the joy that I feel coming back to me and indeed all of us from you guys who love the show so much. That one audition, well, actually it was an audition uh -huh. call back and then it was another call back, but yeah, that's it. It wasn't like, nobody called, nobody picked up the phone and called me and said, do you want to play Ronnie? No, no, I <laughs> Yeah, isn't that the wonderful things in life? And now you've got you've got this awesome show that will probably be remembered forever. <laughs> I yeah, I feel as though this show is not going to go away anytime soon. Oh, no, 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 it has it has made us smart. Um, yeah. All right, so um, why was it important for you to? I, mean, um, I know that, and I hope this is not a spoiler to anybody because I didn't know yet. My friends kept guessing along the way if Ronnie was queer, and I kept saying she is queer. She held a woman's hand in the in the in the room when the Christmas party was happening, and look at her personality. What so? But apparently, you revealed that you are in the last season. Mm -hmm. uh, is this your first time playing a queer character? And what is important? Absolutely not. No. Oh. Absolutely not. No, it's a, it's another thing that, you know, it's another thing that's a hit of mine is that people buy me as a queer person. And, um, and I, so I'm really thankful for that, that, you know, that, um, uh, that I am representing in an authentic way. And because, because humanity, because, you know, I mean, I, I feel like, um, I feel like if, if you actually find out who the person really is on the inside, that it is, that you're, you're further along in being able to 
um, portray people who are different from you. So no, it's not the first time. It's not the first time that I've played a queer, a queer character. I mean, I'm walking around with this face. My hair underneath <laughs> the wrap is <laughs> short. <laughs> you know, I think, you know, and yeah, people just go, oh yeah. Mm. Oh. I think I, I walk my friend Antoine, I think I walk, walk around my life being a suspected lesbian. I think, I think, <laughs> I think that's my hit. <laughs> well, uh. Mm. <laughs> Honestly, I gotta say, Karen, thank you for being an awesome ally. It's 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 our allies who are this genuine about uh, their love and acceptance of the community that that we need more of in this world, and we would be better a better world. So thank absolutely. you, absolutely, absolutely, and and I I understand it. I mean, I'm a black woman. I understand the importance of allyship so, yeah, happy to be here so who was the most difficult to work one with on the set was it eugene or no, no I'm kidding <laughs> imagine if i asked you that question pass, pass. <laughs> <laughs> no actually know, quite uh, frankly antoine there was no one who was difficult to work with it really was the loveliest bunch of people it really was i mean i think we all knew that we were a part of something really special. We know we all knew how rare that occurrence is, and I don't think any of us took it for granted. Nice, nice. Actually, uh, while I was going to say, we could you could totally tell from watching the show that everybody was having a blast. It yeah. almost felt like you're all there having your own little party. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, nice. very yeah. nice. Well, I, I guess you can't ask for better in a job environment. So that's, no, that's a great thing. It's been one of the best ones. Very nice. And um, please tell us there will be plans other than the Ronnie standalone feature. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, are there, are, is there going to be any revival or reunion or is this too early to talk? <laughs> to loosely quote Dan Levy, you never know. Ah, never ah, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh. It, yeah, because it's that man is so incredibly talented um okay. you know i i think he is a brilliant soul and uh, um you know along with his father and and you know so many other people catherine and jennifer catherine, and, oh i love her yeah. you know and, and annie and all, all all the people in the cast i but dan i feel he knows what an impact this show has had okay. and you just you know i i don't think that his um that that well of that wellspring of creativity that he has and and love for the characters in that show i don't think that that will go away so okay. i i honestly do think you never know when he'll come back in. That's good news. That's good news for the fans. I honestly, I haven't, I haven't finished season six, but already my thoughts on season five is, I could watch the show like one of those uh, soap operas that go on for 30, 40 years. I can watch it for 30, 40 oh, years. Oh, <laughs> that's so lovely because I watch Coronation Street like that. <laughs> I mean, it's, well, it's older than I am. The characters <laughs> are very, the characters are very well built. And, yes. I, and I think, I, uh, somebody asked me something, and I don't, I don't know if uh, somebody on Facebook, when I said I'm interviewing Ronnie, uh, they mentioned something, but I don't know if this relates to season six. They said, would you ask her why does Ronnie hate Patrick so much? <laughs> I didn't, does she hate Patrick? I don't know if she hates Patrick. <laughs> uh, well, I think it's like season five, actually. And um, yeah, it's a really, really good question. I feel like, you know, I feel like Ronnie had just gotten accustomed to the uh, uh, to the tsunami of uh, uh -huh. of the roses moving into Shit's Creek and sort of you know um, uh, integrating themselves into the community and you know city council jazz of gals the motel all that stuff okay it's fine and then I feel like you know Patrick just comes along and I'm like okay now who are you and she and, I, <laughs> and and um, I think she loves these people. You, you, you wouldn't know it to look at her face, but I think she loves mm -hmm. the roses, each one of them individually. 
And this man, Patrick, is having such, a, such an obvious effect on um, David. I think she wants to make sure that her friend is safe. So she gives him a hard time. Fair, fair enough. And you know what? You actually said uh, that you can't tell, but I can actually tell. For some reason, I always thought that Ronnie, the character, even when she talks to uh, Catherine or, or anybody, she's, she's, she actually respects them. Yes, yeah. there's, 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 I mean, even when her uh, remarks are snappy and sharp yeah. and, and bitchy sometimes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, she's still, she, she still is coming from a good place that she loves. Underneath them. it all, she does love them. Underneath mm -hmm. that very gruff exterior, um, I think that Ronnie actually really does care. Very sweet. Um, other than being smart and funny and a great show, why do you think it has made such an impact? Why is it culturally relevant at this time or it has crossed boundaries or broke down you know, barriers? Because I think that so many people who before this had been rendered uh, you know, more or less invisible saw themselves um, and saw themselves out of the context of having to make a political statement or um, or teach a lesson or you know or fight to be um, seen as worthy um, and I yeah. think that galvanizes uh, in David and Patrick's relationship yeah. you know uh, you know what I related to um, I realized only when I was maybe in my late teens, so you know, 10, 15 years ago, um, that I had never seen a black couple in an intimate setting on TV in my entire life. Wow, that's right. Yeah, okay. I realized that. And, um, and, and so, you know, you know uh, I think it can, it, it causes a little bit of an internal revolution when, when that becomes clear to you and then you actually do start seeing yourself in, in all of, in, in all of your, um, all of your permutations. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think Schitt's Creek did that for a lot of people. They felt seen. They felt seen. And, then you know it did it with with humor and heart huge yeah. huge heart and and such wonderful in um incisive humor that it's it 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 it, it, it just sort of ticked all the boxes yes okay uh you yeah. know what actually one one time i i went in a conversation with friends i i said why do you why do we think we like the show this much because i think the answers that we got is because they've done everything not in a preachy manner, but more exactly. on a, ma a matter of fact. It's part of life, and they were just characters as part of the daily life that we that we don't. Part of daily life. No, they were never ever questioned. Their yes. right to exist was never questioned. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you to you and all your 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 mates on that show uh, for a great job. We can close the book on that one now and move on okay. to. Tell me, what, what do you love about being an actor? Um, I, I, I don't think that I would do well, even though I'm a creature of habit, I don't think that I would do well in my working life if I had to do the same thing every day. Um, and, I, and acting allows me to explore so many different facets of myself. Uh, you know, from playing a queen in, in Hamlet to, you know, to playing um, someone who is, you know, who, who husband, whose husband is dying in front of her to someone who loves women to, you know, I mean, good Lord, it, when, when Martha Stewart was, was released from prison, where I think this was back in the 2000s or whatever, um, and they decided to do a TV movie about them, um, about Martha Stewart going to prison. I was one of her co-prisoners. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you serious? <laughs> all those different sides of myself. Yeah. So it's um, it 
I I love that. I I love that. Um, I love that it 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 allows me to explore humanity in in some degree of broadness, and then it allows an audience member to see themselves through me somehow, to see themselves reflected in me. And um, I think that's really important. I think that um, I think that I am so fortunate to get to do this because I think the I think the stories we tell knit knit lives together. Um, they make people's lives make sense when you see your history told or your experience dramatized or um, you know or an occurrence. Uh, 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 turned a different way in order for you to have a different view, viewpoint on it, but through humor. I think it may, I think it grounds people. I think artists and art ground people. And I, and I feel very, very fortunate that I get to do this for a living and actually make a living doing it. Wonderful. Uh, I don't think I've, 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 I've ever asked an actor do you feel also it contributes to your own personal growth and understanding of the world and life experience? Oh, knowing yeah. all those characters? Because before I get, before I play a character, I have to find out who this person is. And so I have to do research and like my life feels like research, right? Because I'm, con I'm constantly people watching. Okay. Um, you know, people are endlessly fascinating. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I do think that it asks me, it demands of me to come out of myself and see the world in a way that I may not have understood it before. Beautiful. You know, to have a different perspective on things. Beautiful. I love Respect. That. Lucky you. That's a great thing to have a life where you can I know. Do that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, since, since you've, you've experienced so much and read so much and played so much. What has, uh, what is something insightful or what has life taught Karen something wise that you could share with us? People change. Yes. People can change. Um, and, uh, and even if you go beyond, um, you go beyond people, I think, the only thing that we can depend on in this life is change. Things will change. Nothing stays the same. I and um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have to be okay with that because if we're not, then um, then we're constantly fighting it. And yeah. it and you dig your heels in, and that is that is not helpful. That way is war. Thank you. That you way that's, is injustice. That's something I need to. I, I'm. I'm. I think I'm thankful that you repeated this because it's one of the lessons I need to learn. I resist. I resist change. I yeah. like to go to the same. If the if the grocery store across the street closes, I go nuts. If I don't go Hate to the it. same bar, I go nuts. <laughs> I like things to Hate stay the same, it. but I. But I need to learn that life changes all the time, and you yeah. And I'm not saying that it shouldn't be difficult at all because I am, I'm the same way. Like I said earlier, you know, I'm a creature of habit. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 I feel like it, um, my life, one of the things life is trying to teach me is to just be more flexible. Yeah. Breathe, go with the flow. Thank you. Um, meditation Thank helps. You. Um, yoga helps. But yeah, it's, it's, it's that sort of thing. I'm, um, um, um Seeing it from somebody else's point of view, breathing before you lose your temper about something that, you know, five years from now is going to be insignificant. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, how are you, how are you, this, this, uh, this version of our show being virtual started because of the pandemic. How are you uh, keeping safe during this, um, uh, these times? Are you, are you keeping no. safe? Are you staying home? I, I am staying home. I do my my big outing is going to the, going to the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> I love going to the supermarket. Um, I uh, have you know, socially distanced um, visits with friends, but the okay. the thing is that uh, um, 
my neighborhood, my street only runs one block and a lot of us know each other. Okay. And I'm a gardener. And so I am constantly out there. And so um, my neighbors walk by and I'm able to have conversations with, with people. Right. So I'm not isolated, but I am someone who is, um, who is comfortable with my own company. So, uh, you know, I do not live with my partner. He lives on the other side of town. So he wow. and I are, are a bubble though. I go to his place, he comes to my place and we make sure that we take care of each other. Uh, but there's also been a lot of Netflixing and craving, <laughs> Amazon priming and reading and <laughs> scrabbling online. Scrabbling, and, yay! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I am getting my ass handed to me by the computer. <laughs> like the computer is 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 coming up with words that I like. <laughs> I have never heard in my life. I thought I was good. The computer's like, no, you're not. You're not, girl. <laughs> uh, I, I, you can tell me that you don't want to because I'm putting you on the spot, but the subtitle for, the, for these episodes have been, has been, I will survive. Uh, and, oh, you sing, and, you, and you sing on the show. Can you give us a bar of I will survive? But if you're not comfortable, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Jesus, um, 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 what bar, what bar? First I was afraid, I was petrified, kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. <laughs> and so many nights just thinking how you did me wrong and I grew strong and I learned how to get along, etc. But I think the part that's, um, that's most important is, oh no, not I. I will survive, oh, as long as I got love to give, I know I'll stay alive. No, as long as, how does that go? I, I can't survive. remember. The way. Oh, as long as I know how to live, I know I'll stay alive. I will survive. I've got so much I will survive. To give, so much love to give, and I'll survive. <laughs> I will survive. Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. The other girls would be very proud of you. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm pro I was probably sharp or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is very Yeah. Well, we're kind of uh, ready to wrap up. So, everyone watching, please check out our YouTube archives channel. Uh, if mm -hmm. you need to catch up on the past episodes of the last six seasons, they're all on there. Uh, we are on Facebook at facebook.com backslash like us. Oh, sorry. Join us on the couch. And we will be back with season seven, hopefully very soon. It's just we still have restrictions to filming, so we can't film live. Uh, but we have plans to keep going with some virtual presence as well. Karen, before we say goodbye, any last words to your fans, the viewers, the LGBT community, anyone watching, what would you have to say? Have difficult conversations with people who are not like you. Invite them to have those conversations with you. Let's listen to each other. There are some, people's who's, some people whose mind you're not gonna change. We can let those people go. But I believe that we're gonna get through this if we are um if we are willing to do the work you are lovely <laughs> thank you thank, no, thank you. you thank you for thank you for giving us a, a, a little look behind the scenes on on ronnie and i'm loving Ken. so now i have ronnie who i love and i love karen as well <laughs> oh, thank you antoine love right back at you. thank you everyone watching you have a really, really great uh, day, and I love you lots. Cheers.